This video demonstrates how to utilise ultrasound to identify anatomical landmarks to assist epidural placement. The aim of the tutorial is to familiarise the trainee with the process of using ultrasound to correctly identify the midline and the level for epidural insertion, as well as giving an indication of the optimum angle of attack to the epidural space and its anticipated depth. In 2008, NICE released Interventional Procedure Guidance for Ultrasound Catheterization of the Epidural Space. It's recommended that ultrasound was safe and may be helpful in achieving correct placement. There is an increasing incidence of obesity in the obstetric population. This makes identification of the epidural space by a landmark technique alone more problematic. Ultrasound may increase the likelihood of success in these patients who arguably have the most to gain from successful neuroaxial analgesia and anaesthesia. The first step is to find the desired level. We have chosen L3, L4. Using the probe in the longitudinal plane, the midline is identified by locating the spinous processes. These are the most superficial echo bright structures. They cast an echo shadow as ultrasound does not penetrate beyond them. The probe is then moved cordially to identify the flat surface of the sacrum. Moving laterally, identify the articular processes of the lumbar vertebrae. These have a typical sawtooth appearance. The most caudal articular process visible is L5-S1. Move cranially, identifying the articular processes of L4, L5 and L3, L4 and their corresponding interspaces. Keeping the L3, L4 interspace in the middle of the image, mark the patient's back. From the power medium plane, the probe is angled medially. This allows visualisation through the interlaminar space, demonstrating the echo bright, ligamentum flavum and dura. Occasionally, as in this case, a double line is apparent, representing the ligamentum and the dura seen separately. The intrathecal space is dark as it does not reflect ultrasound, and the anterior elements of the epidural space and vertebral body can also be seen. This image can then be frozen and the depth of the epidural space measured. The probe is then turned through 90 degrees at the L3-L4 level, so it is now in the transverse plane. As the ultrasound probe is moved across the space, the midline can be identified by the echo shadows cast by the spinous processes. The midline is marked on the patient. Moving the probe between the spinous processes, the next step is to identify the interspinous, bone-free acoustic window. This represents an angle of attack to the epidural space and will inform the direction of your needle insertion. This image can be frozen and the depth of the epidural space can be measured. If there is copious soft tissue, compression with the ultrasound probe will lead to underestimation of the distance. The technique can be practiced using a spinal model immersed in a water bath. This is useful for familiarizing yourself with the ultrasound appearances of the lumbar anatomy. To effectively use the technique on the more challenging patients, it must be practiced on individuals where the anatomy can be easily demonstrated.